What other examples can I give? The technology of medical care. Right. Shorter life, shorter life uh, expectancy. Right. So the, the organizational structure that we're functioning within dates to before this young man's wife's grandma was born. And we are operating in that organizational structure with everything else about us transformed. Now maybe, maybe in Egremont and Great Barrington, our commitment to community and the boundaries of these communities, the geographic boundaries drawn on, these, on this ground in those days is so fundamental that we don't want to change it. And having tried to get the village of New Paltz and the town of New Paltz to recognize that we all go to the same churches and synagogues and all shop in the same supermarket and all uh, go to the same schools and therefore we are one community and have failed three times on my fourth try, I understand how powerful those psychological and emotional connections are. We have to find some ways to make this technology work for us beyond those boundaries through collaboration, cooperation, and techniques that help us uh, to overcome some of the costs that, th that this imposes. And they're enormous. They're enormous. Sometimes the scale for local service delivery should be very small. I think everybody should be able to register to vote from their living room or their study, for example. Only once, though. <laughs> but I often, I often think when I'm, I was just recently in Laos, and I put my ATM card in on a machine, and I got Laotian currency. I don't know how it knew to give me that instead of dollars. Maybe somebody here knows that. But, you know, the security of that system is so great that I can walk into a bank in Laos and get money. So the security could be great enough for us to let people register to vote from their study, I think. I, at least I could find some confidence in that. So sometimes, it, but for transportation systems, it has to be larger, I would say. For highway maintenance and operation, it has to be, uh, it, it needs to be larger. So we need to look at each function and see what we need to do to put the, put, to put the best possible arrangements together. This requires local leaderships, people who are willing to transcend the status quo and ask the question, how can we do this better and how can we do this together? It it requires encouraging engagement, getting people in the community engaged in the question of whether the way we're doing it is the best way to do it for us and for our community. And uh, often this occurs around election time, but dissipates after elections are finished. We need a venue where collaboration is a core focus. Collaboration for communities is a core focus. And this place actually is a potential. I don't know whether it would be regarded as a neutral venue or not. I don't know enough about the community. But uh, universities certainly are neutral venues. And we've been doing that at our school. We need to bring people in. Uh, you know, one thing that we have is uh, that, that's been effective is councils of governments. I was reading a paper today. I, I'm, I'm editing a book on New York government, and, and I was reading the paper on local government today uh, for, uh, for editorial purposes and, and, and uh, writ written by somebody else. He made this point, among others, many, many other good points. He made this point. Local governments in rural areas can't hire, usually can't hire the expertise they need to think, of, think through alternatives that they need to think through individually, but they often can do that collaboratively, and we can perhaps hear from you about that. We have somebody who's doing the job in the room. We have a place called Tug Hill in New York where local governments turn for expertise on the various needs they have for service delivery, technology, and so on. So we need a venue, councils of governments. I'm, I'm urging a council of government in Ulster County as a venue that would a guy came in to see me from uh, Connecticut the other day. I hope you don't think I'm rambling too much. Um, I'm on my third point, the remedies. And he said to me, look at this. And he brought me a website with nine Connecticut towns. They're all paying $5,000 to create this facility. 
and all the land use decisions that peop individuals need in the community can be managed at least initially through access to this website. The data is on the system has information about what the community requires to build a, an addition to your house, what it, what it requires to, uh, to, to, to repair your roof and so on. And you can approach that community without going down to the town hall. You can make the payment uh, through PayPal. You can, as long as you're compliant and you've, and you've got the uh, documentation, you can submit it electronically. And all these communities are sharing this electronic technology so that they can do some of their work a little more efficiently and a little lower cost. Now, in that part of Connecticut, they have a council of government that is in the business of helping people see alternatives. We in that, uh, my part of New York don't have such a thing. So when I study 20 towns and one city and three villages and one county, and I suggested a lot of different ways for them to work together toward more effective personnel systems, labor negotiations, and so on, they didn't have a venue. The county supervisor, the county uh, chairman, the, pardon me, the uh, county executive said to me, Jerry, I don't want to incur more costs. I can't be the place where this occurs unless the front end costs are somehow managed so that we can recover from the savings the costs going forward. So there are barriers, big barriers to taking the first step and that's where the state government uh, can be uh, helpful. Experts are important but they have to be properly used. Um, I have been in the role of experts sometimes and I, I'm now on an advisory board listening to experts and it's a treacherous proposition. You know helping people come to their decisions is different than telling them what to decide. And uh, one great value of experts is that you can blame them uh, if things go wrong. An important uh, uh, thing to remember is that collaboration requires buy-in and requires incentives. In my world, in the world of local government where I come from, Town supervisors are rewarded when taxes don't go up. So if you can give wins to people, they will become advocates. They want to get reelected. They have a resource. The resource is being able to come to the community and say, I'm prudent with your money, and I'm keeping government from costing you more and maintaining your service level. Constituencies have to be found for change. We have to approach, my experience is that you have to approach these problems in the areas that people care about least first. The economies in the back office are the easy, easiest ones to achieve because they don't involve somebody's face-to-face -face interaction with the service delivery person, say the police officer. It's notoriously difficult to consolidate police departments in New York and I think across the country because people are jealous of the potential personal relationship being compromised. But if you can find a more effective way of doing your bookkeeping or your accounting, the people affected by change will be worried, but the people out in the community won't be directly affected, except that their cost will be diminished. And the demands upon them may be moderated. And also, finally, if you're trying to get governments to collaborate with each other, don't require everybody to agree before you start get two to agree or three to agree and then start and have their success become the compelling argument. We have that in Chautauqua, in uh, Chemung County in New York where collaboration and highway service delivery uh, was a main goal of the county uh, executive. He started with a few towns agreeing and then community, people in other communities started saying, well, if they can save money, why can't we save money in our town too? Why can't we join in? So the change became an argument for itself. But if they waited till everybody joined in, they would have never started. And the barriers to change, let me briefly touch upon them and stop talking because I've been talking a very long time. Usually I limit myself to 50 uh, minutes because of 40 years of experience with that length. <laughs> but I've now spoken for 